Hi, I'm Dr. Ralph Figgel. I'm director of the Eye Pathology Laboratory at the Wells Eye Hospital. This short video will demonstrate some of the techniques that we use to dissect and process globes in our pathology laboratory. A nucleated eye should be fixed by immersion in a large volume of neutral buffered formaldehyde for at least 24 hours. Prior to gross dissection, the excess fixative should be washed off with running water. The external surface of the globe is examined carefully with the dissecting microscope and the laterality of the specimen is confirmed. Anatomic landmarks that are helpful in orientation of the globe are shown in this diagram from Hogan, Alvarado and Wadell's textbook of ocular histology. They include the superior and inferior oblique muscles and the long posterior ciliary arteries which appear as blue lines on each side of the optic nerve. The insertions of the oblique muscles form a sling on the temporal aspect of the globe. The superior oblique muscle inserts via a tendon superiorly and temporally. The superior oblique tendon is marked by a series of parallel white lines. The inferior oblique muscle lacks a tendon. Its muscle fibers insert directly into the inferior sclera temporal to the optic nerve. The long posterior ciliary arteries are an excellent marker for the horizontal meridian. They are evident as blue lines on either side of the optic nerve. The dimensions of the cornea are another landmark for the horizontal meridian. The horizontal meridian of the cornea is approximately one millimeter greater than the vertical meridian. A typical cornea measures 12 by 11 or 11 by 10 millimeters. After the laterality of the specimen is determined, the globe is measured using a caliper ruler. A standard series of measurements are made. These include the AP or anterior posterior diameter of the globe measured from the center of the cornea. The horizontal and vertical diameters of the globe are then measured in that order. Then the horizontal and vertical diameters of the cornea are measured. The diameter of the pupil is measured and the color of the iris is recorded. The final measurement is the length of the segment of optic nerve attached to the globe. The eye is transilluminated using a special transillumination box. To perform transillumination, the globe is rested directly on the tip of a bright fiber optic illuminator. The globe is rotated on the surface of the light to disclose a tumor shadow. This eye with a uveal melanoma has a tree fine site in the sclera that was used to harvest fresh tissue for genetic studies after enucleation. The tumor shadow is outlined on the surface of the globe using a colored pencil. The tumor shadow is measured with a caliper ruler. The eye is cut using one half of a double-edged razor blade. Lines drawn on the surface of the globe with colored pencil are helpful aids during sectioning. A face shield should be worn during initial sectioning to protect the eyes from spurts of fixative that occasionally occur. Prior to opening the globe, a transverse section of the optic nerve is removed and submitted separately. This is done to avoid contaminating the surgical margin with tumor. Colored pencil is applied to the end of the optic nerve to mark the true surgical margin. During sectioning, the globe is positioned corneal side down. The cut is started posteriorly next to the optic nerve sheath and a gentle sawing motion is used. This is converted to a two-hand technique to complete the cut. After sectioning, the globe is examined carefully with a dissecting microscope. This eye contains a large, heavily pigmented ciliocordal melanoma. This eye contains a posterior chamber interocular lens. The radial ridges on the iris pigment epithelium and the pigment rough surrounding the pupil are seen through the optic of the interocular lens which is present in the lens capsular bag. 
Severe glaucoma and cupping of the optic nerve is present in this eye. The macula lutea is seen as yellow pigment in the periphoveal retina temporal to the nerve. The specimen is photographed with a digital camera attached to the dissecting microscope. During photography, the globe is immersed in a bath of 60% alcohol to reduce reflections from its wet surfaces. The dish is placed on the surface of a wet sheet of plexiglass to provide an aesthetic blue background. The bottom of the dish is coupled to the plastic with an additional interface of alcohol. During photography, the globe is positioned on a ring of soft malleable metal used for bird banding. The oil slick on the surface of the alcohol is removed with fine tissue. The second clot is then removed. The section globe includes the central PO or pupil optic nerve segment and the two caps or collots. The PO segment and a slip of cardboard with the specimen's accession number are submitted for tissue processing in a metal cassette. After dissection, the specimens are dehydrated and infiltrated with paraffin wax using a special tissue processing machine. The specimen is dehydrated by passing it through a series of graded alcohols into xylene and then into paraffin. After tissue processing, the specimens are embedded in paraffin wax using an embedding station. A metal mold is filled with molten paraffin wax. The PO segment is placed in the molten paraffin and the metal mold is placed on a cold refrigerated surface to coagulate the wax. The specimens are cut using a specialized instrument called a microtome. The paraffin block containing the tissue is placed in the chuck of the microtome. A ribbon of sections measuring 5 to 7 microns in thickness is cut. The ribbon of sections is transferred to the surface of a heated water bath, which makes the wax expand. The sections are separated and picked up with glass slides. The slides are stained using an automated stainer. After staining, the slides are cover slipped. After drying and labeling, the slides are ready for microscopic examination and diagnosis. The microscopic sections are used to diagnose eye diseases like this pediatric malignant retinal tumor, retinoblastoma. This retinoblastoma contains numerous circular structures called flexner wintersteiner rosettes, which are seen under higher magnification in the next photo. Examination of microscopic sections also can govern therapy. The retrolaminar invasion of the optic nerve seen in this eye with the retinoblastoma is an indication for additional chemotherapy.